Sometimes video game bosses present challenges we weren't expecting. Will hurting them make me feel bad? Will the game be harder if I beat them? Am I actually the bad guy when all's said and done? For whatever reason, some of the best subversions in gaming get delivered through boss battles. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are 9 video game bosses you don't want to beat. Number 9. Genoshiro Ashina – Sekiro Shadows Die Twice there's something super frustrating about forced loss fights in gaming, the ones where you're supposed to lose, usually to depower your character or teach you a lesson as the player. One such fight is Genoshiro, the brick wall of Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. If you've picked up the game for the first time, this early game boss will probably completely flatten you. His aggression and syncopated actions impossible to counter with only a basic grasp of the game's mechanics. Yet, if you're replaying the game, or you're some kind of caffeinated Minority Report style master of foresight, you'll know what to expect and can actually be the victor in the first battle. Even if you defeat Genoshiro here though, a completely random magic shuriken will fly in from nowhere to save him, triggering the scene where Wolf loses his arm anyway and the game just continues. Glad we fought so hard for absolutely nothing. Number 8. Handsome Jack – Borderlands Millions of gamers feel a certain affinity towards Handsome Jack, the cocky and charismatic antagonist of the series' first sequel and arguably its best installment. On the one hand, you want to slap that smile right off his chiseled half face, but on the other, you can't help but love the sheer brazenness of the character. Regardless, Jack's writing goes deeper. Clearly, Gearbox and 2K saw the hate-love energy surrounding Handsome Jack and gave him a more active role as the deuterologist in Borderlands the pre-sequel, allowing players to get a bit more of character background, fleshing out some twisted tragic details about Jack's marriage and his daughter. Despite Jack's cruel machinations, you come to understand that the mask Jack wears isn't just about a physical portrayal of being handsome, but also a facade he maintains to convince others into believing the lies he's convinced himself of. After you realise Jack is just trying to cover up his own insecurities, it completely reframes Borderlands 2 and every single scene with the character. All this is pretty incredible for an otherwise inessential spin-off. Number 7. Elder Dragon Grail – Elden Ring this enormous serpent lies in pain, surrounded by its infant protectors, barely even able to breathe. Grail in its prime may have been too gigantic a challenge for any player, and you'd be forgiven for assuming this beast is actually a huge segment of mountain at first due to the sheer enormity of it. Yet Grail pathetically whines in pain as you slash at its ridiculously bloated health bar. If its children spot you, they'll fiercely defend their mother, but hide in a corner and you can hack away uninterrupted, listening to 20 or so minutes of whimpers with Grail seemingly accepting its fate by your hand. Grail clearly has nothing left to prove, but if you spend half an hour thwacking away at the bridge wyvern's tail in Dark Souls 1 just to get the Drake Sword, you'll be determined to see what drops. Well, you get a ton of XP and the ability to scream like Grail in her prime, but not much else. Was all this really worth it? Number 6. Toriel – Undertale the mother figure of Undertale, Toriel's role is a carer, a protector, and the embodiment of at least the idea of a perfect life. Seeing the player as a way to preserve that memory and retake lost innocence once you know the full story, Toriel's attempts at forced safety and pies cooling on the windowsill only make you want to escape, eventually by force. After Toriel has repeatedly told you to use words to mitigate conflict, when presented with the opportunity to leave unless you really put the time into talking her down, the only way you'll reach that door is taking Toriel's life. Even if you do the former and leave in a pacifistic sense, Toriel's heartbreak leaves you emotionally drained and hangs over the rest of the game. Number 5. All of the Bosses – Nia Gestalt slash Replicant it might sound weird rolling all of Nier's bosses into one entry, but Gestalt slash Replicant genuinely is one of those games that flips everything on its head after you've finished. Playing as father or brother to sick girl Yona based on which region you were playing the game in and which character type sold better at the time, Nier himself needs to find a Lunar Tear, an item that can grant wishes. Standing in his way are shades, dark creatures of mysterious origin and motivation. Carving through them all like a chainsaw through my neighbor's hedge because he refuses to do it himself. On a second playthrough, you'll discover the chilling truth. The Shades are as human as you, and their once indecipherable language is revealed to have been their screams of terror as they beg you to stop the slaughter. Turns out Nia has ostensibly been under a spell the entire time. Number 4. Parthenax The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim 
Not an extreme sports sex maneuver often sees the player navigate tricky moral choices, but Parthenax is a bit different. The ancient dragon indirectly teaches you all the dragon-based shout powers you know and is behind the greybeards. All round, it's just a sick-looking ancient dragon voiced by Mario's Charles Martinet oozing wisdom from every pore. And yet, the game's Blades faction hate him because of a past affiliation with main bad guy Alduin, and once they find that out, they'll ask you to murder him. Do so, and while you can then continue more Blades quests, Gear and the rest of the Greybeards won't talk to you, actively asking you to leave. The only rewards you get are more dragon bones and a dragon soul to power up with, safe in the knowledge that you just killed one of the coolest characters in fantasy video game history. Number 3. The Boss Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater a philosopher, a brutal combatant, and the mother of Revolver Ocelot, the boss presents a unique opponent to Naked Snake and the player. She is both betrayer and betrayee, understanding she is nothing more than a pawn in a bid to take responsibility for a terrorist's actions, yet she continues with her mission devotedly, an embodiment of supposed patriotism. Approaching the boss in a field of white blossoms, the fight starts explosively before getting progressively intimate, eventually ending in close quarters combat, where boss constantly compliments Snake on his growth as a soldier and as a person. When she eventually falls, she passes her mission onto him and asks Snake to end her life. The player accepts that as Snake, they are also nothing more than a puppet of their superiors. In killing the boss, Snake's former mentor, the player must play the part of perpetuating a cycle, the cycle of soldiers accepting orders in spite of emotions or moral implications. Number 2. Sith – Dark Souls have you ever accidentally stood on your dog's tail? There's no more immediate, oh dear god, sorry, let me hold you, than that precise interaction. Yet, Dark Souls tells you here's a big dog who loves its owner so much that even in death it'll defend the burial site, then immediately asks you to put the pooch down. What's far more tragic is the player can actually have some indirect interactions with Sif before this point, seemingly helping him before the game blindsides you with that battle. If you did help Sif, your character will reach out for a gentle pet, but Sif howls in sadness and recoils. No matter how much you may have done for one another, Sif now has a mission and they need to complete it. And no matter how much you want to leave, you must kill Sif to progress. And number one, Cutie. It takes two. It's true that after several decades of gaming, your tolerance and sensitivity for gore, violence, and distressing content reaches a point where even the most grotesque acts hardly make you wince. I literally cackle and laugh like a tiny child whenever the latest batch of Mortal Kombat fatalities come around, and few things are more hilarious. For those of us who've played It Takes Two, though, we know all too well the awkward and random torturing of a stuffed elephant. In Joseph Farris's bar-setting co-op game, two parents on the verge of divorce find themselves turned into tiny figures by a curse accident accidentally triggered by their daughter. At one point in their story, they discover their daughter's tears may hold a magical power, and actively seek to make her cry by destroying her favourite toy. The kicker is that the toy, Cutie the Elephant, ruler of the kingdom, is alive and is ridiculously sweet because she's imbued with the energy of pleasing a tiny child. What follows is one of the most psychologically effed up scenes in history, a brutally unforgiving, goreless but still visceral depiction of a childlike being begging for her life while being ripped to pieces and thrown to her death. Cutie repeatedly states we could all still be friends, only for the two parents, Cody and May, to literally dance in the tears of their daughter. Oh, and all of this does nothing, with the characters learning nothing from it. Thankfully, the credits reveal Cutie is still alive, but good lord, Joseph Farris, what the hell happened to you as a child? And those are our picks for video game bosses that you didn't want to beat. Let me know your own favourites down in the comments below, and please subscribe to the What Culture Gaming Podcast. For now, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com, and I'll catch you soon.